and we continue in prayer. Dear God, as we continue to find ways of using your influence in our lives, we are grateful for your guidance through this morning's preacher, Dave Scrooge. We are grateful for this opportunity to reflect on how we can best serve others. There are many in our local community for whom lockdown restrictions have not been pleasant and who need our help and support. May we feel your influence as we try to use this church's people and premises to offer help to those in need, using all the appropriate guidance and regulations we are continuing to open our doors to some of the groups for whom St. Mark's is their home. We pray that those who are organising and facilitating these meetings can feel our support <coughs> and your strength to be careful, thorough and caring. Dear God, Stimulated by your influence, we commit ourselves to working with others to make this world a better place for all. And let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father,
Our second reading is from Matthew 18, verses 21 to 35. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often am I to forgive my brother if he goes on not doing or not in me? As many as seven times, Jesus replied, I do not say seven times, but seventy times seven. The kingdom of heaven, therefore, should be thought of in this way. There was once a king who decided to settle accounts with the men who served him. At the outset, there appeared before him a man who owed 10,000 talents. Since he had no means of paying, his master ordered him to be sold, with his wife, his children, and everything he had to meet the debt. The man fell at his master's feet. Be patient with me, he implored, and I will pay you in full. And the master was so moved with pity that he let the man go and cancel the debt. But no sooner had the man gone out that he met a fellow servant who owed him a hundred denarii. He took hold of him, seizing him by the throat, and said, Pay me what you owe. The man fell at his fellow servant's feet and begged him, Be patient with me, I will pay you. But he refused and had him thrown into jail. But he refused and had him thrown into jail until he should pay the debt. The other servants were deeply distressed when they saw what had happened, and they went to their master and told him the whole story. Then he sent for the man and said, You scoundrel! I cancelled the whole of your debt when you appealed to me. Ought you not to have shown mercy to your fellow servant, just as I showed mercy to you? And so angry was the master that he condemned the man to be tortured until he should pay the debt in full. That is how my heavenly Father will deal with you, unless you each forgive your brother from your hearts. Our next hymn, I want to do that, is What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
lovely to stand here. Can we all hear me? Holy oh, Father, I want to thank and praise you that you are a mighty God. I pray now, Father, that the words I bring will be the words that are on your heart too, that we may learn something and be blessed, because you, Lord, are the teacher. We, Lord, are the humble servants who wish to grow more like you. So pray, Lord, what I have to say, or maybe if Jesus shows up in the middle, I won't be embarrassed. Praise your holy name. Right, I wonder if you recognised what those two readings were about. They were very similar in one way. They were both talking about the wonderful mercy and forgiveness of God. In Psalm 100, it's a wonderful psalm of thanksgiving. It's one of those psalms, whenever you have a praise meeting, I always remind people, when we stand before our Maker one day, we may regret a lot of things, but you will never regret the time we worshipped and thanked our wonderful God. And the psalm is, is you know, full of heartfelt gratitude in that for all God's mercy and his love. And again, there we saw the same picture of a merciful God forgiving a man because the, the king in that is God, the man represents God. And how often mankind can be just like that man. We all have a lifetime of debt. You know, we all have the things of thought, work, deeds, prejudices, anxieties, resentments, hatred. They're all part of what we are and we have to deal with them. And I say, you know, that man is so typical of so many in today's society, freely given wonderful things, but do nothing but complain and uh, not thankful. Recently, we all clapped the National Health Service for the wonderful job they do. But this is the same National Health Service they were suing last year because the people didn't get the miracle they wanted. I worked for a while at Mersham Hospital on a part-time basis, and I can tell you, <coughs> people there got uh, had, uh, uh, operations down that cost fortunes and lots of aftercare, lots of love and all they can, you know, because they didn't get a miracle, they, you know, they're um, encouraged to sue rather than forgive, sue. Gratitude is scarce, but thankfully, over the long term, down period, we've seen some wonderful people doing wonderful things. And uh, let you know, there's still love in the world, and we'll thank you for that. <clears throat> but I do get concerned when I hear people saying, we need more police, we need more care workers. We, we do, but have you noticed, they all want, always want someone else's money to pay for it. You know, the government should, the government should. But the government has only got our money, and we've got to get it from somewhere. And once you start raising taxes, <clears throat> people start complaining, don't they? <clears throat> Anyway, society can be very unforgiving. <coughs> and as I say, after that, then someone's head has got to roll. Force someone to resign. Force you. It's very sad. We even saw that the dreadful thing of Grenfell, didn't we? First, there was a wonderful love of people contributing. And all of a sudden, then very quickly, uh, then there was generosity. And that, then we saw greed come from that. Then we saw blame, and then someone's head has got to roll. And if you remember that uh, chief uh, police officer had to resign, although she had done nothing other than by what was laid down to do. But that's how human nature is. It's very, very sad. Unforgiveness is a giant we all have to face up to as slave. It's the Goliath in our lives. And so many Christians I've seen who needed help, not got what they want because they've not got around to forgive. And if we don't forgive, we cannot be forgiven. And we've all been victims in some way or another. Have you been burdened? Have you, you know, had, uh, been scammed? Have you had been abused? Have you been assaulted? Have you been mugged? All these things happen. I mean, I've had several of those things 
happened to me. And what to do? It makes you very angry. And if you look, it's very, very difficult to forgive, but we need to do it. You know, and I have to confess, as a person, this is a very difficult subject for me because I'm not good at turning the other cheek. But we have to do it. We have to do it. Jesus said, love one another, do good to those who hate you. And in Ephesians says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. You know, it can fester overnight. Have you been there and done that? Been hurt so much more for a car street with it? You know, and try to lay to it. Very difficult, very difficult thing to do. But we have a tremendous example in Jesus nailed on a cross after all the beauty, he went through it. Said, Father, forgive them, they know what they do. And I tell you what, failure to forgive somebody manifests itself in many ways. And one of the great ways is if you hear the person who's wronged you being praised, it's very, it's very difficult to keep quiet. <laughs> so, oh, but did you know, you know, what about when, you know, it's very difficult. There's a line in the Lord's Prayer, which I shock you a bit, that there's a line in the Lord's Prayer which you said, Forgive us our trespasses as we give that, forgive those who trespass against us. And it's been said that that line has made more liars out of people than any other document in history. Yeah. Think about it. We pray that through the war. You know, as we forgive them. The Germans bombing our homes, you know, we do. You know, oh, <clears throat> and there are people, you know, if you've got a neighbour from hell, these things are so difficult to do. There's nothing easy about it, you know. I sometimes think of a, a, about this when I'm praying with people, and very often the word comes out. Have you got someone you haven't? Been? Oh, I'll never forgive her. That's why she did this. I'm, I'm I'm committed to my dying day. You know, all this sort of thing. And it, all it does, it damages us. Nelson Mandela, when he uh, was approached, I said, all those years in prison, didn't that make you bitter? And he said, no, bitter was only hurts me. So it's, it's true, isn't it? We don't do ourselves. Oh, <clears throat> in January, just before I gave up driving, I went and visited a dear old lady in our church for many years, and uh, she was there housebound, and she asked me to go and pray with her, so I went. And I said, are the church visiting your right? She said, oh yeah. She said, the vicar came last week. He wanted to give me communion, but I can't, I couldn't do it because I found out my neighbour. Now, how many consider that when they have communion? Are they uh, right with people? If not, leave your gift at the altar and go and put it right. That's what we're, not, you know, that's what we're, we're told to do. But very, very, that's an even thought about. And I say sometimes when bitterness is towards God, <coughs> you know, we blame Him, often unconsciously. Why did He let that happen to me? Why have I got this affliction? Why did my loved one die? Why didn't He prevent this? If He's a great God, why is He getting all this? Why? Is it? You know, we have these things come, and unconsciously, very often we can. Uh, blame God for things that are happening to us. You know, I've had to ask that to myself many times. I have a verse I hold on to. It's in Romans saying, All things work together for good for those that love God and according, according to His purposes. All things work together for good. And when I've been suffering and going through something, I've always asked, oh, What I've got to learn in this? At times I've been in hospital. I've seen people, I've been thinking what, and I've seen people who are so much worse off than I am and dealing with it far better than I am too. And I think, wow, you know, this is, this is, you know, we need to make this effort, don't we? Think of Job. <coughs> Job made sacrifices every day for his ten children because he was concerned, and yet they were taken from him. What did he say? That which I feared has come upon me. The thing he wanted, so much of it, and they all were taken from him. And we know that he got worse and worse and worse for him, but at the end he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. 
we have to get to that place, don't we, where we can deal with our forgiveness. Sometimes it is 70 times 7. If someone says, you know, because it keeps coming back to you, you keep getting right, oh, I've forgiven that, I've forgiven that, you know, I must have gone down that avenue, I've forgiven that. It's a very different thing to do, and we all have to face it. How do you know when you've truly forgiven someone? Hmm? Well, firstly, when we have no desire to get even with them, when we say nothing that will damage their reputation, and when we truly wish them well in all they seek to do. Sometimes that's very hard if someone you love, something we do if you sometimes when it's against somebody you love, if your mother's been mugged or something, I, I know my son had a terrible situation with people who, well, he lost £25,000 and left with a roof that was terrible. And I say, and you can't help think, oh, if I get hold of those people, punch the tires, they can't, you know, they shouldn't tell me, no, Father, they're weak like I am. I'm blessed, you know, and I you have to. One of the things I like to remind people is, we're only here a short while. One of the things I've never been able to comprehend is eternity. And nor can you. It's beyond comprehension. Let me just make a minuscule of what it is. Imagine this earth as one big ball of cotton. When you unravel that, that would go for perhaps billions of miles. Let's imagine that's the date of eternity. Now look at your little finger. That's how long you're here. That's how long you're dead. We need to know where we're going, don't we? Yeah, we, we need to be people that say, no, we've got to get ourselves right in this life. And if God can forgive me all those silly things that I've done, all those bad things, all that, surely, surely, I can look on someone else with more love than I've been uh, doing so many. Uh, so many. <coughs> Then again, of course, there's another thing you have to do. We have to forgive ourselves. Now, you may have done something that you really regret. Something you never thought you would ever do. Couldn't possibly do that. But in a moment of weakness, or a moment of fear, you know, you did it. You cheated that person. Or you knocked someone down in the car and didn't stop it. You play a practical joke when it's terribly wrong. And you think, oh gosh, you know, and you try to count. <clears throat> Very often you think, if, oh God, have I forgiven, committed the unforgivable sin? No, you haven't. No, you haven't. If we faithful and just, He will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our not righteousness. We have to bring it to God, don't we? Put it right. Very hard on all these. This is a, I don't know why I got this sermon, but it's a very difficult one to do. It's very hard to be forgiven. Very hard. But I do know if you've got people annoying you and people who you just cannot get on with, some people take hate you from the word go. So hard. But we had in that story this man owed so much 10,000 talents in the days, all for not. <coughs> Buy a slave for 30 pieces of silver, 10,000, and we're buying you an army of slaves. But he'd been forgiven all that, and it didn't come home. So, no gratitude, no gratitude. No, no, no. I'm going to get that five pounds out of that person over no matter what, you know, that sort of gratitude. And it's there, it's, we see it around us, and we can so easily join that club if we're not careful. We have to remember who we are in Christ, don't we? There's a thing that's been very concerned to me. A famous preacher said it, and I don't know why, but it, it, it rasped with me, and it's <coughs> the, uh, the unconditional love of God. It's true, in as much as he lets the sun shine on the good and the evil, we let it you know, the rainfall on the on the sake of the sinner. But it doesn't mean God's approval. You know, there are conditions if you want to be a Christian. You have to repent and believe. You baptize. There are conditions if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There are conditions if you want forgiveness. You have to forgive. 
you know, they are, so when we get these statements, we're not a panacea of, you know, God's going to know if we're looking. The Bible says a lot about the day of his wrath, like the, the, the king in his story, at the end, when Fred, you know, there's punishment at the end, because he didn't do, didn't follow on what had been done with him. If good has been done to you, it's good to pass it on, isn't it? You want to share it. Yeah. What about those men at the gate, the, the, the lepers, when the, the siege of Jerusalem, and <coughs> they went out and they found all that, the, the army had been slain, and all the goods were there, and they couldn't help themselves. They said, what are they doing? They said, no, let's go back and tell them that, you know, the lepers are going to share the goods. There are so many wonderful Bible stories that remind us again and again of the, you know, the grace and the wonder of God and how in us we can reflect that. You know, as much. Do you know the name that Jesus gave us? One of his names. He said, I am the light of the world. He made one and said, you are the light of the world. And you know, we, we need to shine, don't we? You can't shine if you're going around with an unforgiving nature. So anyway, let's just remind us of this. I mentioned that line in the Lord's Prayer <coughs> forgive us our trespasses <coughs> as we forgive that we forgive others that may have been our failing and we need to deal with them. But the wonderful thing is the first, first part of it forgive us our trespasses. He knew we would trespass. He knew how weak we are. He knew that we would fail and we are. And that's why we need the Jews all the night they could never even if they, you know, even they fulfilled everything that was meant to be in the law, and they added, there were 613 laws in the Pentateuch. I don't know if you've counted them, but that's how many there are. And they, <coughs> one man came to Jesus and I kept them all since all day. That's been a wonderful guy, wasn't he? But he wasn't saying he was still left when he was asked something. <laughs> Give up all you've got. And <laughs> then, if, then we found there was somebody who was speaking to him. But there's a wonderful message of a wonderful God who's forgiven there everything that we've ever done, everything we ever will do if we come with a repentance in our heart. And also to remember that when we have been forgiven, let's freely be forgiven, let's freely forgive. Let us bring some of the love of Christ to other people. You know, don't respond with, uh, with evil, with, you know, with evil against evil, but let's bring good and overcome evil. Let's have a prayer. Father God, you do know how hard it is for many of us, Lord. We have people that are very difficult to deal with. There are people in perhaps in our own family who are broken off with and found very difficult to um, reconcile things. But Lord, you know, and indeed, Father, it is possible. All things are possible to those that believe. So I ask in your mercy, Lord, for any of us here, Lord, if we have people that have been very difficult with, we need to deal with them. We cannot go to the grave with unforgiveness. We need, Lord, you to make the opportunity to make the way out of it for us to be free and forgiving of one another. Because, Lord, your forgiveness and mercy is wonderful. It's beyond anything we could have ever imagined. The whole gospel story is absolutely amazing. It's beyond anything that we could have asked. So only a mighty God could have thought of it and engineered it and had a son who would fulfil all that you desire him to do. So again, Lord, we give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
we commit ourselves to using the word forgiveness more often and to making it influence our actions. We ask for your help both individually and nationally as we attempt to keep a moral and legal pathway through the Brexit negotiations. We ask for your help in structuring procedures to combat COVID-19. We ask for your help in mobilizing communities, large and small, in such a way as to reduce the risk of COVID-19 spreading more by increasing the responsible actions within our communities. We ask for your help care for colleagues in this congregation. Pray for Bernard. We remember young people who've not been able to join us yet as they navigate these uncertain times.
in these awkward times, we don't want to be passing things to each other, so the offering plate is at the back of the church there on the table. And please, if you would be so kind as to put your offerings in the plate. And so we just say thank you, God, for the opportunity to return some of your gifts to us as we seek to involve our work in the community. Amen. And our last hymn is We Love Divine, All Loves Excel.